Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we have a 2015 BMW 640i with a N55 engine in it and the customer's concern is a check engine light on and also what feels like a misfire. I test drove it briefly and it did uh, in fact feel like a fish bite misfire. It was come and go. It wasn't exactly 100% dead misfire uh, up until it got to a point where I guess the computer decided to... Uh, do cylinder deactivation. In other words, shut off the fuel injector in order to save the catalytic converter from any further damage and also to prevent any cylinder wash uh, within that cylinder, which could end up scoring the cylinder and ruining the rings. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and start with a pre-scan. I already did all that. I pressed, you know, quick scan, and then we're just going to check out the report real quick. And... We can see a bunch of modules here. And we have a lot of intermittent misfires codes, uh, namely cylinder four. And we could see that the fuel injector was turned off for it. Uh, we have a lot of codes for just that particular misfire situation. And we have an air mass plausibility, air mass too high. Uh, that's We'll, we'll get to that, I guess. <laughs> the main concern was the misfire. We'll go ahead and deal with that first, and then we can probably deal with the air mass. Sometimes it could be, you know, a, a difference in what it's expecting to have at a certain RPM compared to what it actually has. Um, a, a, a smoke test usually would be the, the first place I would start, maybe a quick visual at the air mass. But first things first, let's go ahead and uh, recreate the symptom. All right, so we are within the vehicle. Let's go ahead and turn on the key. already got all my lights on we have uh, 68,000 miles on it let's go ahead and start it up the good thing for us it's pretty easy to hear because of this exhaust you can hear it whoa sorry that's not a good thing. <laughs> Never put a camera in front of an exhaust. <laughs> All right, so you can hear it. We got a little misfire there. So me personally, what I like to start with is replace all plugs and coils. No, I'm just kidding. What we're going to do is hook up our scope. And um, in my experience, BMW is pretty generous when it comes to you know, waveforms, uh, primary, secondary waveforms. Usually with BMWs, I actually put a BMW video a long time ago, checking out a primary waveform. Let's see if this that's doable here. Let me just go ahead and uh, pop the hood. Force a habit already. Most uh, a lot of BMWs will open with two pulls. <laughs> okay, um, to each their own, but. Yeah, I think that explains the air mass plausibility issue right there. And that is not in good shape either. We got a twin power turbo, <laughs> twin scroll turbo. Let's go ahead and take a look. I love the access, the amount of access you get on these. So that is our, whoa, what's going on over there? I don't know if you guys have can see this, but I don't like the way that looks. Somebody has completely chewed up in there that injector wire. Not cool. Either they have a rodent problem, which I've yet to find out. It's across several. That's happening over here as well. That's a shame. But, yep, here as well. Anywho. We're going to tap into this coil right here. Let's go ahead and set up our scope. So you're gonna need this attenuator right here. Pico's finest. Does the job pretty well. And make sure you hook that up before hooking up your regular lead. 
Now let's go ahead and back probe the coil. Now if you're wondering which wire you want to back probe, if you don't have a wiring diagram and you cannot see the command wire that's coming from the PCM, what you can do is take a look at the odd man out. If you notice, I won't, you won't be able to see it in this particular instance, but in every coil you will see a brown wire. Also in every coil you'll see a red and what appears to be a light blue wire as well. And finally the last wire that's left, it's different colors in each coil. So that's the one you want to get because it's an, a separate circuit. It's not a shared circuit like the other two are. So let's go ahead and back probe that. So my home screen is already preset to my liking, which is one channel open, channel A, with a 20 volt range on it. In order to compensate for the attenuation that we installed, we need to hit times 10. So let's hit that. And I rather play it safe and be um, within range than to be over range. Then you'll just kind of lose the signal. So I hit it at 1 kV. If I feel that I'm losing vertical resolution, I may decide to come back and, and modify that. But usually the zooming capabilities of the PicoScope are plenty good. Uh, enough so that I could just zoom in and, and it wouldn't be an issue. And, and for those of you who are wondering why I would bother scoping a, something as simple as a misfire, especially a fish bite misfire that most, more than likely will be a secondary issue, is not only for documentation purposes but also to rule out any root causes that might cause a comeback in the future. And by root causes I mean premature coil wear. Um, I've said it time and time again and many trainers, many very intelligent trainers have said it time and time again that uh, lean conditions prematurely wear coils, uh, high compression will prematurely wear a coil, and high secondary resistance will also prematurely wear down a coil and weaken it. And um, to change a coil without ruling out a root cause is opening yourself up for a comeback, to be honest. To put it frankly, there are different things that can cause high compression, as some of you may know, a binding lifter can do that, where an intake um, valve, I'm sorry, not a binding lifter, actually a partially collapsing lifter in which it will close sooner than it should. It, it kills, it shortens the duration of the intake valve opening and it will close sooner. And believe it or not, that actually makes higher compression because of a, high, a longer uh, piston stroke, I'm sorry, intake stroke. The piston is in a lower position within the bore at the time of the intake valve closing. So that can cause that. Also, lobes that are pressed in, sometimes they could shift. You may have an advanced intake uh, lobe position. Things of that nature. So just, just to rule out whatever it may be. Usually if, if it's a coil, I'll, I highly suggest doing the spark plug. Uh, as well. Uh, more than likely with the mileage that it has, this is a GDI engine, this is ex more accelerated wear and tear, I may decide to suggest all plugs and, um, and that coil entirely up to the customer. But just to prevent a comeback is, is really the name of the game here. So uh, let's get on with it. We'll go ahead and start the vehicle, see where it falls. And if we have to adjust the range, we'll go ahead and do just that. So let me just jump into the vehicle and do that and get it started. And not too bad, but I still want to be more within range. So I'll go ahead and bring it down to 500 volts. And I like to set up a trigger and hopefully we'll be able to catch it before the cylinder deactivates. And you can see the hash. I'm going to go ahead and stop the capture and turn off the vehicle. Now analyzing the waveform, as you can see, uh, when it is not misfiring, we do not have any indication whatsoever of a lean condition. So that's good. That's good for us. Uh, we can go ahead and replace the culprit 
without worrying of a link condition as the root cause. And, uh, you know, I obviously I used my hearing to see where exactly it was misfiring. And those of you who have watched Jim Morin's or taken his, his classes, uh, his trainer actually uh, taught him some things to kind of make it a little easier to diagnose uh, ignition waveforms. And that is that from the firing line to the end of the burn line, the burn line being this right here, if you make a, an imaginary center line, anything to the left of that, closer to the firing line, in other words, is outside of the cylinder. Anything to the right of that is within the cylinder. So what we're looking at is within the cylinder. And me personally, I don't, I've, this is something that I've just been saying to kind of help out others, but I'll go ahead and say it here as well. I also think of an imaginary line horizontally, not just vertically of the burn line, but also horizontally in what I would call resistance. So if you draw an imaginary line, let's, let's just call it the height. The higher that height is of that line, the more resistance. So you have to think about what is causing the resistance. Is it be inside this, uh, I'm sorry, is it before it enters the cylinder? If you see a spark coming down from way up high and then coming back down, that's, that resistance is starting, it's, it's way up high from the get-go. That's outside the cylinder. You can already imagine that's high secondary resistance. If you see a firing line jump up way up and then go way back down to ground, that's no resistance. That's straight to ground, so you have a short to ground. Um, if it's inside the cylinder, if, if it jumps up and you have a, a high nose that is resistance that is coming up, um, fuel is a conductor, lack of fuel is lack of a conductor. So if you have within the cylinder resistance that is rising, you're lacking fuel before the spark energy is totally consumed. So the fuel is consumed before the spark energy is. If you have a, a downward slope, if everything compared to others, compared to the other coils, if everything starts fine and it starts to slope downward, it may be indicative of a, a rich condition because it is less resistance. So what's going on within our cylinder here? If we look at our good one, I'm sorry, our non-misfiring uh, event, it, it's a little bit turbulent. But here is it is just pretty bad. It starts fine. It looks like our everything from the coil down looks pretty good. And at this point, I would be leaning towards either an issue with the spark plug, which tends to not be so intermittent like this, or an issue with turbulence, possibly carbon, uh, carbon buildup in the intake valves, and um, that can cause issues with it can cause a rich condition just as much as it could cause a lean condition because if it if carbon on the intake valves are so caked up that it is restricting airflow then it will become a rich condition but if it is so caked up in a way that it becomes turbulent um, airflow in turbulent enough to cause the airflow to uh, come into the cylinder in a way that it wasn't designed then it can cause a non well mixed air fuel mixture and you'll have a lean concentration right at the spark plug. I really want to take a look at these um, intake valves to make sure we have no carbon on them. I don't know how I'll do that just yet uh, considering the setup but I do want to take a look at them at the very least uh, just to rule out a carbon caked up intake valve as the root cause of what's going on here. I stuck a bore scope in through the intake and um, I saw some carbon on the valves. Not as much as I thought I would see to be honest with you, but I'm thinking this carbon is, is screwing up our mixture, causing all that turbulence in there and causing a lean concentration right where the spark plug fires and it's it's turbulent, so you can't control it. It's intermittent. 
if it was a lean injector we there's no need to see all that turbulence there's you know it's just lean injector <laughs> um, and you look at when it fires good you can still see some turbulence in there too it just has me thinking now like I said it's not as much carbon as I thought it would be maybe it's because of the way I took the, those pictures but it doesn't look like that much all right, so we are back at it. It's been a couple of days. We got an approval only to remove the intake and hit this with a walnut blast. A couple of things I've noticed. Uh, all of these coils, I don't know if you guys caught it before, but all of these coils are brand spanking new. And also the injectors have been swapped as well. So that's a shame. Yeah. At least those are <laughs> two things we can rule out. The spark plugs, I, I did pull out one spark plug to uh, see if I could stick a borescope in there. I didn't see anything at the injector head. That's when I realized that those parts are new. And they did code it right. Uh, you're supposed to code these for compensation, flow compensation. And um, they were coded correctly. And just in case, I swapped it to another cylinder, the spark plug. And, you know, it was... Skepticism already, but at the same time, it's just killing two birds with one stone. I figured might as well. Why not? Nothing to lose. And another test I did was a very long relative compression test just to play it safe because, I, like I said, you don't want to risk anything. I'll be able to show that I believe I saved, I hope I saved that relative compression test. If I did, you'll be seeing it on the screen right about now. If I didn't, I do apologize, but uh, that relative compression test was totally beautiful never dropped out not once so <clears throat> which you know i wanted to rule out because it's turbulence so if you had an intermittent sticking open uh exhaust valve or intake valve or what have you you will have an airflow that shouldn't be there and that would show itself up as a uh, turbulence the fact that it only does it like on one misfire and then goes right back to being good steers me away from an injector issue because you would usually see a more repetitive nature uh, to the failure but like I said we're playing it safe we're testing we're not guessing and we're we're really digging in into the into the whole carbon aspect of it I don't know what else could possibly do such a thing um, I, be, I don't know if these have intake runners within them we'll find out but I, I would imagine if the flap was flapping around even then, <laughs> I have doubts because it happens in one misfire and then the next firing event is perfectly fine. So for a flap to do something like that just on one firing event, it's just too fast for, for that to make any sense. So, but my money is on the carbon and we'll go ahead and show before and after. Even though it's not that much, it may be just the sweet spot. It may be just enough to cause an, a non-homogeneous mixture as Bernie Thompson would call it. And uh, in other words, it's not a perfectly blended air fuel mixture. It's, there's lean concentrations, there's rich concentrations, and whatever happens to be at the spark plug at that time, uh, that's what we'll see. In, and usually ends up being a lean concentration. And that's why we saw a, a lean, hashy, turbulent uh, waveform. Now, mind you, I'm not an expert on ignition waveform analysis. So I don't want you to take my words with, I would rather you take it with a grain of salt. It's up to you to do your research and do your learning and uh, make sure nobody, you don't, you don't get all your information from one source. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. So uh, that's just a disclaimer because really uh, I am a student as well and I'm constantly learning and every car that comes here is another learning experience as I hope that each video that you watch on my channel is another learning experience is not to be taken as if it were set in stone so just a quick heads up on there and we'll get back right back to you so like I said not as bad as I thought it would be I have seen plenty worse but we're following the evidence and we're just going to do one up blast on this anyway and an induction service afterwards and make sure it's truly cleaned out on all cylinders and let me go ahead and show the rest just for the heck of it hopefully we'll be able to see everything here yep 
I won't show all of them. I'll just show these couple ones. But yeah, not as bad as as one would expect. But <clears throat> we're sticking to the plan. You know, we we have a game plan. You stick to it and um, let the data and the evidence uh, lead you. It was a lean, very turbulent, intermittent misfire, and that's that. We're just going to stick to it. Stick to the plan. And I'll catch you guys as soon as this is cleaned up. Alright, so this is after the cleaning. We went through each and every single port. This is number four over here. And I would like to show you all of them, but that may be a little more difficult than I anticipated. But, yeah, this is the end result right here nice and clean so let's go ahead and uh, see if we could get this car fixed shall we can't win them all I am uh, I'll be the first one to admit that didn't fix it it's very discouraging to uh, be so certain about something and then um, turns out you're wrong and then you know <laughs> gotta go break it down to the boss gotta go break it down to the customer you know not justifying anything but in my defense I'm I'm, I'm testing as much as I can before I actually do anything at this point we've already ruled out um, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to say with a straight face at this point but we have ruled out an ignition issue an injector issue carbon <laughs> the plugs aren't new but I swapped the plugs just to just for the hell of it and it didn't that didn't help the vehicle's still misfiring I haven't confirmed yet whether it's the same cylinder I'm pretty positive it is uh, sucks big time big time when you're wrong about something but you know Every now and then you get your ass kicked and, and you got this is gonna be a learning experience for all of us. So you gotta keep keep my head up and uh, figure this one out. I'm trying to think of that waveform and, and thinking what else could cause that specific waveform. If it's not if it's turbulence it's it's likely gonna be you know, compression issue, but I didn't see anything in the incident in there waveform at idle could it be my my timing you know this this misfire didn't didn't show up until um the vehicle warmed up so maybe i was too cold maybe now would be a good time to do another in cylinder at idle but man sucks to go back to square one i'm gonna pull some codes and see if it's the same cylinder because we cannot release the car like this. If you guys felt this, it's pretty bad. The cylinder deactivation has already taken place. This thing's running on five cylinders at the moment. And... Crap. <laughs> Damn. If the general public is watching this, kudos. Just so you know, we hate being wrong just as much as you hate when the mechanic's wrong um, we don't know it all we guide ourselves by testing and at this point I, I was totally convinced it was carbon because of that turbulence but just gonna have to keep digging so it is definitely doing the same thing we're getting these crazy turbulent misfires let me stop the capture and turn off the vehicle. <sighs> Let's go ahead and take a look at this capture. Yep, short burn time. Intermittent 
turbulence. That's all I can think of is turbulence there. I did put the bore scope into the cylinder and I didn't see any kind of like carbon on the piston head that would probably cause like hot spots or whatnot. It's not uncommon on GDIs either. I don't remember seeing a bunch of carbon on there. Hmm. So after getting my ass handed to me properly by this diagnosis, I uh, cut my losses and reached out to a couple of uh, more experienced fellas, more experienced technicians. I actually put a post out in that automotive group that I created and Seth Thorson and Justin Morgan from LMVIndBavarian.com. Those guys dedicate themselves to this stuff 24-7. They reached out and they, they pretty much told me, they instantly knew what it was. Once I showed them the waveforms and the tests that I conducted, even though I swapped the spark plug and the, the misfire persisted on the same cylinder, the root cause of this misfire, intermittent misfire, was actually uh, the aftermarket spark plug. <clears throat> the new spark plug, I'll put a picture up on the screen for you guys, has BMW labeled on it. The old spark plug does not. It says, you know, NGK, I'm sorry, not NGK actually. Here it is, double platinum, Bosch. This is what came with the vehicle. And even though I swapped the plug, you know, it just goes to show that on these engines, these N55s, you can only use without a doubt at this point. I totally thought th they were original plugs, but it turns out they're not. They're aftermarket. They were changed. Uh, they, did, they left it all dirty. That's why I guess I thought <laughs> they weren't changed <laughs> when I pulled it out the first time, I pulled out that spark plug. Goes to show only OE plugs on this engine torque it down to spec and don't bother swapping plugs as part of your testing. Uh, that's just, this is proof that that just doesn't work on this particular engine in this particular case. And um, I will show the uh, waveform that Justin Morgan provided to me. I did have some doubts at first because the hash on his uh, waveform starts right as soon as the firing line comes back down, uh, which points to a secondary issue. But mine started way at the uh, right half of the burn line, which is within the cylinder, but still still counts as a spark plug. You know, it, it could easily be, you know, a different plug temperature, different. There's something definitely different between the two. I didn't check resistance between both plugs. I don't care for that because now I know that we're going OE only. Now, for now, I only changed that one, but we are definitely going to change all of them. We cannot leave that how it is and expect this not to come back uh, when one of those other plug uh, when one of those other plugs fails. So I guess another thing I could, I, I really want to leave you guys with is you know you go through this all this testing you're so convinced I mean it is soul crushing to um, you know go through all that and be so you know like certain you're so certain that it's going to be you know one thing and it, it doesn't end up being that. And, and if, if only the public knew that, you know, we're really, we really want to know what's wrong with the vehicle and it sucks being wrong. And sometimes it's way more costly than just a couple of intake gaskets and, and a bit of labor. Sometimes it's, it's really expensive mistakes. And that's, that's experience. That's how we learn. You know, we get our asses kicked and we, we learn with each blow. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm happy as can be now because it's fixed. That's all I care about. We, we weren't going to release the vehicle unless it was fixed. Um, but you know it was a lesson learned <laughs> and it's, it's nice to see also on top of that if you guys could take away anything else from this video it's not only those things that apply to testing the spark plugs on this or misfires in that case on this vehicle but also the importance of networking and having uh, great colleagues great technicians nearby that are willing to lend a hand because too many too many times i've seen it in this industry that you know, they, they, people just don't want to help, and and that's that's unproductive, in in my opinion. That's unproductive uh, in this industry, and it doesn't help anybody 
uh, it doesn't really help the person who's not willing to help either. It does, it's just, I guess, maybe they see it as a waste of time. But you know what? It, it's it's moments like these where all that counts, you know. And and great dudes like that, that are willing to help others. Um, that that's what matters, you know. I have my circle of YouTubers as well that I reach out to. But when it comes to certain things, I, I'll post it in the group and see who bites. And and it was worth it. It was worth it. Because if I never, that's one of the things, that's another thing is that, you know, if you don't ask questions, you're not going to know. How was I supposed to know that even though I swapped the plug, <laughs> the plug was the issue, you know. <clears throat> that waveform obviously uh, has taught me a lot already. I did suspect a spark issue in there, but I was leaning more towards turbulence because of how hashy it was. I didn't realize that it would be like this uh, for a spark plug issue, but that's the thing. I haven't seen too many issues where a bad spark plug would cause such a hashy waveform. You know, I was expecting to see something on the secondary side of that burn line. So there's there's so many ways i could end this video and I, and i wish i could cover everything that's going through my mind um involving this particular case but all i can say is I, I i learned my lesson and i hope you guys can benefit from this by restraining yourself from depending on the swaptronics uh, as a, a true guide when it comes to this particular engine and this particular situation a misfire situation don't trust it <laughs> don't trust it at all uh for those of you who were wondering, 23 newton meters is the torque spec on the spark plugs. I will be doing the rest, uh, obviously pending approval, but you know, considering it's fixed, I, I'm pretty confident that we'll get that approval. Um, I only, I'll leave it at that. I, I could go on all day about this particular situation, so. I think I'll leave it at that, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have in the comments section. Uh, be sure to like, and if, if you know, I know that I'm going to get a, some, some rough comments uh, for being wrong, but you know what? Uh, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. All I can say is I hope you all enjoyed this. Hope it was useful because I, I really don't want to make videos that aren't useful for you guys. So uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Hit like, share, subscribe if you haven't. Think about subscribing. Um, hoping to get more interesting stuff out here soon for you guys to, uh, to learn from, you know, and to uh, ride along in the journey as well when I, you know, do get my ass kicked. So... I will catch you all later. I'll leave it at that and I'll catch you all later. Thanks again. And until next time.